Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to my full tutorial series for Beat Breaker, a brand new multi-effects plugin that's now available in Logic Pro 10.8. With Beat Breaker, you can radically reshape and reshuffle audio in real time. You can slice up audio, rearrange it, and modulate each slice in various different ways. Originally, I was going to do this as a single full tutorial, but the video ended up being almost an hour long, so I decided to cut it into two parts. In this video, I'll cover all of the basics and how to get started in Beat Breaker, and I'll mainly focus on the time edit mode, which also includes playback speed adjustments. And in part two, I'll cover the repeat and volume edit modes, along with how to use the presets. But before I jump into the tutorial, I wanna quickly tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Boombox. Boombox is a really cool music and audio collaboration platform where you can upload your tracks, send them over to collaborators, and they can add time-stamped feedback to the tracks. Boombox is great for when you want to collaborate with co-producers, co-writers, bandmates or mixing clients. And it's not just limited to audio files anymore. You can upload entire DAW projects. So upload your entire Logic Pro project to Boombox, share it with a co-producer. They can put their swing on it, send it back to you. You mix it, you bounce it, and then you can upload the final mix and stems back to Boombox for review. What's even better is you can do all of this from your macOS desktop using the new Boombox Sync app. If you want to give Dropbox the boot, head over to boombox.io today to get four gigabytes of free storage. I find the easiest way to get started to learn the basic functions in Beat Breaker is to start with a simple straight feel drum pattern, which is exactly what I have here. And again, I should mention that Beat Breaker is not an instrument. It is a multi-effects plugin, meaning that it can be added to software instruments, audio tracks, aux tracks, track stacks, and it can even be placed on the main stereo output in your Logic project. So to locate this, you add it up as an audio effects plugin on your track, and it's located under multi-effects. So I've pulled it up, and this is what the default setting looks like. Each of these are different edit modes and they can actually all be used together. So you can simultaneously have time, repeat, and volume modulation applied to each slice. So before I even get into using presets, let's just talk about the time edit mode and how this works and how you can use this to slice up and change the timing of your input audio. So I'm gonna start by just playing back my four beat loop here. And you can see that the length of the loop within Beat Breaker is four beats as well. So you have to think about this like a graph. The horizontal axis is time, and each slice marker right now is representing eighth notes. The vertical axis represents the position of the incoming audio signal. So you can see on the left, the waveform for the input, and then the area with the slice markers is showing you the output. So a really simple example would be like, maybe I don't want any snares. Right now there are snares on beat two, and beat four. So what I could do is I could take the slice at beat two and move it from beat two down to beat one. So that means that this slice is going to play the same kick drum that's right here at beat one. And I could do the same thing over here at beat four. But maybe I don't want that open hi-hat that's there. So instead of using beat one for these, maybe I could use beat three, which does not have the hi-hat there. Now there is a limitation to this. This first slice is not going to play the first time, but I'll come back to that and show you how to get around that in just a moment. Maybe I want to move this double hi-hat that's right here at 
over here at 2.5. So all I'd need to do is drag up this slice so it's representing the same positional data or the same beat over here. Or maybe I wanted to make this like a halftime feel beat. So what I could do is maybe pull this down. I'll pull this down. Uh, let's actually just start with everything just doing hi-hats. So if I just pull this down to the second slice or the uh, it's actually in between beats one and beat two. So I guess it'd be beat 1.5. This is just going to be a bunch of hi-hats. Now, normally, there's a snare on beat two, so let's move this up to uh, beat two, but we're, again, we're using the beat two slice on beat three, so normally it's here, but we're moving it to an earlier slice, an earlier beat in the input. And there was that double hi-hat hit, I think it was here at 3.5. Maybe I want that over here as well. Or maybe let's change it up to be here. So this is why I like to use drum beats with Beat Breaker. Not only is it a cool technique to change up loops and drum patterns quickly on the fly, it also makes it really easy to sort of understand what Beat Breaker is actually doing with the timing and how it's slicing up the beat. And pay attention to the little white line on the left side of Beat Breaker because this is showing you exactly where each of the slices are playing. Okay, so before we move on, let's talk about the real-time processing limitations of Beat Breaker. So to start, I'm just going to go ahead and just initialize the setting. So this takes us back to where we started. Because Beat Breaker does all of its processing in real-time and with low latency, if you use a slice that is above this dotted line, so if you pull all these slices up, you'll see that there's a dotted line under here showing the original position of each slice. If you use a slice above the dotted line, that slice will not show up. It will not play in the first time it plays through, but in subsequent repetitions, it will show up. So let me just show you a quick example here where I've pulled the second beat slice up to beat three. And this will happen with any of these slices when you pull them up above the dotted line. They're not going to show up on the first playthrough. So why does this happen? Well, it happens because you're asking Beat Breaker to play a slice that's further down in the loop, even before Beat Breaker has had a chance to actually play through that portion of the audio. If Beat Breaker was able to do that, it would require an insane amount of latency, like in this case, a full bar of latency. So there are two ways you can deal with this in a full project. The first is that you can simply bounce the track or bounce the regions in place to audio, to a new audio file, and then you can edit the audio so that the real-time processing is not a problem. So for example, what I could do is I could drag over all of this, hit control B to bounce in place. This bounces all of that as a new audio file for me. You can see in the very first repetition, we are missing a few slices. So all I would need to do at this point is just simply use my bar snap and my marquee tool to chop up a full portion of the loop and just copy it over. And you don't even have to copy and paste that much because by the second bar, it's already going to be correct. So you could just delete that and then copy this first bar over since my loop is only four beats in length. So 
So that's one way to sort of practically deal with this in a mix, in a full project. Now, another way to deal with this is to add a short region, uh, maybe one bar or a couple of bars before where you want the musical example to come in. So for example, if I wanted the Solaris beat to come in here at bar five with all of the effects in Beat Breaker being applied, so I don't want any missing notes starting right here at bar five, what you could do is simply copy and paste over like one or two bars, depending on how long uh, your loop is, you can copy and paste one repetition of this before where you want it to come in. And then what you can do is you can press A to pull up your automation, you can pull up your track or region automation, and then just mute that area so that this part doesn't play, but its processing is carried over to the first audible repetition. So now if I pull up Beat Breaker, and I start my playback from like bar four here. And there you go. So the missing slices happened here at bar four, and then by bar five, it was able to catch up and grab those other slices. So it's a bit of a weird limitation, but it, it makes total sense if, when you think about how Beat Breaker operates essentially always in a low latency processing mode. If it was able to grab slices from the future, it would require that much extra latency in order to achieve that. Okay, so now that's out of the way, let's dive into some more of the time edit mode features. Let's start with the loop length. Now by default, this is set to four beats. What this means is that each beat is shown over here. This is the input signal. But what it does by default is it actually divides up those four beats into eighth notes. So that's why we have 1, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, and so forth. What you can also do here is you can change the loop length. So let's say I used two beats. So now this entire sequence is fitting into a two beat phrase or a two beat loop. And each of the slices are now representing 16th notes. So you can see that the original uh, loop here, the original input is only showing two full beats. And you can see that the beat is now broken up into small quarters. So these are actually 16th notes now. So if I wanted to guarantee I had like a faster moving hi-hat pattern, I could reposition some of the 16th note hi-hats. Or if I wanted this to go slower, I could choose a longer loop duration. So here, this is eight beats, and now each slice is a full quarter note, a full beat. So let's say I wanted this little extra snare hit here to come in at another section, maybe over here. All I would need to do is I can borrow this slice from over here, and now it'll show up over here as well. And maybe I want to do it here as well. So breaking things up into eight beats and sort of slowing the pace of each of the slices is a really cool way to take drum loops and sort of recycle them and reshuffle them in a creative way. There's also a de-click option here. The de-click just de-clicks the edit points. So as you may already know, when you chop up and shuffle audio clips around that are adjacent to each other without using crossfades, you risk getting little pops and clicks in your audio. This de-click feature mitigates that. So if you find that you're having some noticeable pops and clicks in the output signal, you can simply just raise up the de-click amount. Likewise, there's also a blend option, a mix blend option. What this does is it blends the output signal with the input signal. So if you want to hear like 50% of the original input blended with 50% of the processed signal, you can do that here as well.
Let's try this with a bit faster tempo. Let's go to two beats. So this is really cool to use at like lower values because at lower values, you're hearing less of the processed signal. And then the process signal is coming through as just these slight little variations to the drum loop, almost like ghost notes. So again, this is just another creative way that you can use Beat Breaker. Next, let's talk about some of the individual slice parameters. Off screen, I've slightly changed up the beat to be a straight eighth note beat on the hi-hat. So when you click on a slice, you'll see these three parameters pop up here. The first one I want to focus on is the input beat. So this is defining the input beat position of that slice. So in this case, the one that's selected is 2.5. If I move the 2.5 beat up to say 3.5, you can see that in the timeline here and the output, it still stays in the 2.5 position but the audio here is grabbing the signal from 3.5 rather than 2.5. Now by default, these slices will snap to a grid. They snap to the grid of the original input signal. So I can go to one, I can go to 1.5, which is like the second eighth note of the first beat, beat two, beat two and a half, and so forth and so on. But you can actually change this snap value if you want. Let's say that I wanted to grab onto 16th notes rather than 8th notes. If you go up to the little three dots here and then go down to snap input beat, you could set this to a much faster or shorter grid value like a 16th note. And so now I have even more adjustments for this slice. So again, now I'm able to snap this to 16th notes, or if I wanted to do a longer value and sort of lower the number of possible options, I could put this on a quarter note. And so now I can only snap these to the beats, one, two, three, and four. So those are some different ways you can set the snap beat uh, for the input values. You can also set this to off. And what this will do is it'll allow you to just freely move the slice wherever you want. And you can see the input beat change up here to values other than whole numbers and 0.5. So now I can get in between these rhythmic values. So one thing this is really helpful for is if you're trying to sort of mimic a little, just a little bit of swing, not a lot of swing, but a little bit of swing, you can pull down these just a little bit. And so now every other hi-hat is gonna have a little bit of swing on it. Now you're hearing a little bit of, uh, you know, more clicking and popping. So this is another situation where maybe you could pull up the D-click a bit to compensate for that. Now, even if you have your snap input beat set to a rhythmic value like an eighth note here, if you want to freely move the position of the input beat, you can actually still do that from here. You just click and drag up or down here rather than clicking here. So here it's gonna sort of snap to whatever value you have set, but here you can manually adjust this to any value on or off the grid. Okay, next up is the speed parameter. And this is one of the coolest features in Beat Breaker, in my opinion, and where you can really start to warp your musical ideas. Essentially what this does is it allows you to increase or decrease the playback speed of each slice. So if you decrease this below 100%, 
This will make that slice play lower and slower. And at higher than 100%, this will make the slice play higher and faster. What also happens is you're able to start grabbing bits and pieces from the next slice over. So here, I'm shifting up the playback speed of this hi-hat. So it's a little higher, but I'm also grabbing a little bit of the kick drum that's at slice three or at beat three here. So this is incredible for warping the pitch of each slice in addition to the timing. Now there's one added bonus to this that's really cool. You can actually drag any of the slices down below zero. So you can drag these into the negative. And what this will do is it'll actually reverse the playback. So again, above 100% is a faster playback speed up to 800% below 100% down to zero is going to slow the playback speed. And in the negative, it's actually going to reverse the playback speed. It's gonna reverse the playback of that slice. That beat is so much more interesting than the original beat that I had. So this is why I love the playback speed adjustments here. And they're just, they're so hidden in here. Unless you know exactly what this does, you, you may never even realize uh, that this exists. So playback speed, one of my favorite uh, features in Beat Breaker. Now, in addition to adjusting the playback speed, you can adjust, also adjust the curve of the playback speed adjustment. So you can make this more logarithmic or more uh, exponential in nature as you see fit. So for example, over here where I have this snare and kick, if I want the pitch adjustment to be more focused on the end of the transition, toward the end of the slice, I could pull this down into the negative. And if I want more of the pitch to happen at the front end of the slice, I could pull this into the positive. So there's a lot of different ways to warp the timing and pitch. And again, keep in mind, all of this is within the time edit mode. So now that we've explored the time edit mode in its full glory, stay tuned for part two, where we'll jump into the repeat and volume edit modes. And we'll wrap up any loose ends, like some of the global settings. And we'll also talk about how to use and save the presets down here that are integrated into the Beat Breaker plugin. A big thanks to Boombox.io for sponsoring this video and helping keep the lights on over here. And a big thanks to you all as the viewers for watching, liking, and subscribing. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for the support, and thanks for watching.